tube in. Uh, he's been on ventilator now for a couple of weeks. They finally got that, got him uh, extubiated or whatever you call it, you know, put the tube in yesterday. So they say he's doing much better. He's still got a long way to go. So remember Howard Walker's cousin, Jeff. Um, Patty Parker's doing better. She was in the hospital this week with lots of problems from uh, uh, basically COPD to pneumonia and on and on. So uh, lots of things, but she is home now. She's doing much better. Talked to her again yesterday, so uh, she's doing a lot better. Okay, and that's all the updates I have. So anyways, you go ahead, Mr. Kathy, that's fine. Okay, all right. <clears throat> you know, it's, uh, last week we talked about, we're still talking about, you know, all the different things, how, how much uh, Sorry. <laughs> Jesus is a greater high priest than the, than the Levitical high priest and all. So we talked about throughout Old Testament times and even in the New Testament times, we talked about the law. You know, type deal. And uh, I'm going to take a few minutes this morning before we get into the lesson, you know, chapter 7, verse 12, and talk just a minute about the law because, uh, you know, several things about the law and understanding the law because, you know, the last half of chapter 7 talks about the law being done away with, or the law being fulfilled, how weak the law was, how changeable the law was, okay? Uh, you know, the stuff deal. So the law, law, remember, it per se is given to Moses basically to to rule the people or to help the people in their worship, worship of God and all. The law, primary purpose, primary purpose was to convict people of their lostness, convict people of their sins. And by convicting them of their sins, help them to look forward to Christ. All the Levitical priests and everything else that dealt on the law did exactly those same type of deals where they were helping people to look forward to Christ. And Christ is the greater high priest well, greater than the, than the biblical priesthood, okay? So they looked forward to Christ. They, they, you know, this, was, uh, this was given, you know, basically to, to Moses and given to the people. Started out with the Ten Commandments. Went from Ten Commandments to basically 613 commandments. 248 of them were thou shalt and 365 was thou shalt not, okay? It's amazing how there's more thou shalt nots than there are thou shalt's. You're talking about Christian people and everything else. It'd be more of thy shalls than thy, thy shall nots, okay? But all these things did this and it helped people to, to basically come toward God, come toward righteousness. Remember, the law absolutely, absolutely could not provide salvation. The law could not provide forgiveness of sins. The law only did one thing that was made atonement for sins, okay? We talked about that extensively last week. And that atonement, by being, by being atoned for sins, they were allowed to go, to go to paradise and wait the time when Jesus, you know, paid the price for sin, was resurrected, and, and brought them out, okay? Yes, ma'am. Go ahead, Ms. Kim. Just like if, just like old time, old testament time versus new testament times, you know, people lived under the law, but many of them were not saved. Many of them did not focus on God. Many of them were lost as a goose, just like we have lost people today. Okay, so they're not going to do those things that, that God tells them to do under the law to provide atonement for their sins. They're just not going to do that. They're going to bust hell wide open, and they did. Okay, and they're still in hell and waiting the time when when they will be judged at the white throne judgment. You know, type deal. But, you know, all that, that, that basically the law did in this time deal, and the law was very temporary. It was made to be temporary. The law helped them look forward to Christ. And since they looked forward to Christ, therefore it had to end when, tempor it end, end when Christ came. They no longer, we no longer live on the law. Many of the Jews that are alive today that are not Christians, they still are, in, in essence, living some parts of the law, living on the law, that type of deal, because they don't have the new covenant salvation of grace because they have not given their lives to God. They do not have a temple to do sacrifices in, so they've modified the law. It's amazing how 
people do and we modify what Jesus said to fit the signs of the times. Okay? The signs of the times need to be modified to fit what Jesus said. That's our problem we have today. Because we are modifying. We say, well, I just do little sins. So therefore, I'm not, I'm not lost as everybody else. So therefore, since I do good works, I'm probably going to be saved and I'm going to heaven like everybody else. And as Brother Mike says, Greek word, baloney. Okay? <laughs> Don't happen. Okay? But remember, the law, law for them was, was primary. The law is what they lived under. Okay? Because they had nothing else. They went to the priest, the high priest that served in the Levitical tribe. They, they, uh, there was many, many, many priests. All the sons of Levi under Aaron was priests, and therefore they did this blood sacrifices. They, they brought the sacrifices in. They slaughtered down, put, sprinkled the altars and all for, you know, for the atonement of sin of the people. They had only one high priest at a time. You know, scripture, script, well, scripture doesn't tell us, but Josephus, one of the one of the many historians of the time, says basically from the time that the law was instituted until the time that the law was done away with by Christ himself is that there were some 83 high priests. And that's one of the things our scripture is going to talk about, how the high priest had 83 high priests under the Levitical law, and we as the new covenant, we as the, the grace of God, we have one high priest he has always been, he is now, and he will always be. Okay? We don't have to worry about a change. We don't have to worry about somebody else. Okay? And remember the high priest and those things that, that, that he did was, he went in once a year. He had to sanctify himself. He had to do all these sacrifices and everything else to cleanse himself in order to go into the Holy of Holies once a year to make atonement for the, all the sins of the people, or make atonement for the people. And he interceded between man and God once a year. What about what we live under today? God, through Jesus Christ, Jesus intercedes for us every day. Every day. 365 days a year. Okay? What a great thing that is. What a great new covenant that we live under of grace because God has provided salvation for us. Okay? It talks about, we'll see in verse 18, I believe it is, where it talks about how weak the, the law was. The, the weakness of the law was that it could not provide justification for people. If it could not ju provide justification for people, it could not provide salvation. Remember, there's three parts of, of salvation, our salvation. One is the justification, where we have saved, when we have made, been made just with God. Once we've done that, we do that once and for always. We never lose that. We never change that. We never have to be re-justified. Okay? But what we live under after justification, we live under sanctification. That's where you and I are today. Every day, we've been made closer and closer to what God wants you to be. Closer and closer to what God has directed for your life and to be who, who you need to be to serve God. Okay? You're sanctified every day. Sanctified means that you're going, it's going, God is going to help you live through the mess that we're living in, in. He's going to show us where Christ is in our lives and how we can defeat Satan each and every day. But we can only defeat Satan through the power of, of God himself. You and I cannot defeat Satan. Don't let anybody ever tell you that you can go out and you can defeat Satan. Satan is much too powerful for you and me. He is not, not more powerful than God himself. Matter of fact, God himself is greater than Satan and all of Satan's henchmen around us, okay? And there's a lot of them. I was reading a book this week about, you know, the author of the Harbinger. I don't remember what the name of it, something about. No. Return of the Gods. Talking about all the things that, you know, that went on and all the things how history has shown us and how, you know, I'm, I'm sitting there, she's, she's reading it, she's telling me what, what's going on, and I'm sitting there going, I'm just marveled. Got through and she goes, You want to read this? I said, No, I know it. <laughs> I said, You already told me what it is, so just pass it on. Okay? But what a wonderful thing it is to know that God is what we live under today. Okay? Each and every day, Christ intercedes for us and Christ has forgiven us because of his blood sacrifice, because of what he has done for us. He, he's forgiven us of our sins yesterday, our sins we're going to do today. And our sins is going to be done tomorrow. 
So we've been justified by once by God. We have been sanctified as we go through now. And the last step of salvation is, is glorification. Hallelujah. Glorification happens when rapture comes <laughs> or you die. When we get into the presence of God, we have been glorified because we will be given our new bodies. We will be glorified to the point where we are standing in the presence of God Almighty in heaven, in the third heaven, if you will. Okay? So all those things is how much greater it is. The law itself could do none of these things. So as you read the things of the law, just understand the law was powerful in these, in these Jewish people's lives. Okay? Because if they were not, all it did was convict them of their sins. Show them that they could not come in the presence of God. They were not good enough to live, you know, for God himself because of the sin in their life. No difference from us today except for that we're good enough to be called the children of God because of what Christ did and not what you and I did. They were trying to be called Christians or what they weren't Christians then. They were trying to be saved by the things they did and bringing animals to be slaughtered and bringing the blood sacrifice paid for them. Even though it was good sacrifice in that they were trying to do what the law said for them to do, it, it meant nothing as far as, as being saved and going in the presence of God when they died. Okay? We know the only thing, the only time that they ever in the Old Testament they ever got to be in the presence of God is after Jesus descended, opened the doors of paradise. When he opened those doors of paradise, their souls went to heaven at that point in time. Okay? So the law... So remember, as we read through and all the things here, it talks about the superiority of the son of the high priest. Superiority of the son of the high priest means the high priest was set up through the law. Since the law is no more, there is no more high priest under the law. Okay? There's only one high priest. And that's what, you know, that we're talking about here. There's only one high priest, and that is Jesus himself. Okay? Any questions about the law real quick before we get into this? Okay? I know most of you understand that. Most of you know that. But just understand, as you read through Scripture, Old Testament and New Testament, the law is very prevalent in what, they, what the writers are here. Because they are, this, this Scripture is written to the Jews. Okay? The Jews know the law. Okay? And they live under the law. So this is where this Scripture is written to and for. So it's very important for them to understand their, their releasing of the law, their fulfilling of the law. Go ahead, Wayne. Well, the law also had another purpose, too. It had a practical purpose. Because God gave them regulations and laws that would help them because they don't find or anything, but a lot of hygienic laws and things like that was for a purpose. And a lot of those things are still good for us today, even though we're not under the law. Right, yes. Yeah, you know, that, like I said, we know, just like I eat the Ten Commandments, that's part of the law. But we still live, per se, under the things of the Ten Commandments, and the things that separate us from God. Okay? So there's many things with those things, but you and I don't live under the law. Okay? We have no, nothing that ties us to the law anymore. Okay? Whatever. Now, you know, like he said, you know, the, the, the things that, you know, hygiene and everything else, you can live under that or not. I'm telling you, I know a lot of people don't live under that. I see the rent house of my grandson, my grandson's fixing to move into. The people moved out of that didn't live under that. Okay? I'm going, nobody can live in this mess in their life and have any idea what hygiene means. Unless they be able to spell it. Okay? So, you know, that type of deal. But just understand, okay, that the law was for them. It was bring them to the point of looking forward. As we talked about yesterday, you know, people in the Old Testament and New Testament either look forward or look back. And all of them did the very same thing. They looked forward in the, in, the, in the Old Testament to Jesus and his coming. They looked back in the New Testament where we are to what Jesus has already done for us. Okay? Okay. Chapter 7. Begin in verse 12. We'll read verse 11. We finished verse 11 last week. We might finish verse 11 this week. <clears throat> if perfection could be obtained through the Levitical priesthood, for on the basis of it, the law was given to the people. Why was there still need for any, another priest to come one in the order of Melchizedek, not in the order of Aaron. So we talked about here that perfection, if perfection could have been done, if the law could have given perfection to the people, if the law could have provided salvation for them, there'd be no reason to do anything else. There'd be no reason for Christ to come and die. Okay? Because they were made, salvation was made for them. Salvation, salvation was already here. 
But they could not do that because they had no means of the perfect blood sacrifice for the forgiveness of sins under the law. Okay? That only happened when Jesus came, perfect life, sinless life, gave his life for us, died on the cross, and was resurrected and went to heaven. Okay? So that was the reason for our the things to come. The reason why the law was temporary. Okay? Verse 12 says, For when there is a change in the priesthood, there must also be a change in the law. And we know that in that just showing that the, the law was set up to say, okay, we're going to take only the priest. Only the priest under the law could be under, under the lineage of Levi, which is under the lineage of Aaron. Is he, is he a son? In order to be a priest, you had to be in that lineage. That was, a, that was part of the law. Okay? We no longer do that. Okay? And he even says further down here that you know Christ came and he is not under that lineage. He is not in that line. He is in a greater line. Even God says in Psalms 110.4, even God says that we have a greater priest that did not come from that. Okay? So we know that, you know, that, that God has provided for us and God, God wants to do those things. We know that, you know, that we have a greater high priest than any high priest the law ever provided. Because the high priest under the law were sinful men. Even though they're the high priest, even though they were the underly priest, they were still sinful men. Okay? Under what we live under the new covenant with God himself is, we live with a high priest that is not sinful. Never has been, never was, never will be. Okay? A much greater high priest than anything that the law ever had. Okay? <clears throat> Verse 13 says, He whom these things are said belong to a different tribe, and to no one from that tribe has ever served at the altar. At that time under the law, in order to serve as a priest or high priest, you had to be in the, in the lineage of Aaron, in the Levi, Levi, in the Levitical priesthood. Nobody else could, could, could serve under the law. Nowhere there was put anything else. Verse, verse 14 says, For it is clear that our Lord descended from Judah, Judah is another lineage other than, other than through Levi. So therefore, Jesus came from the line of Judah. If Jesus is going to serve as a high priest, then he, then he had to supersede the law. The law had to be changed. The law had to be done away with. Or else he'd never been able to serve as high priest to, to the people. Okay? Because he is not under that lineage of Levi in the Levitical priesthood. So it says that had to be changed. That was the first, first place in this scripture it talks about where the, where the law was done away with, fulfilled, and set aside, okay? Because Jesus was, was to be high priest. It says, uh, this clear that our Lord descended from Judah, and in regard to that tribe, Moses said nothing about priest. In the law, no word did he say those. Verse 15, and what we have said is even more clear. If another priest like Melchizedek appears, one who has become a priest not on the basis of regulation that to his ancestry, but on the basis of the power of an indestructible life. The lineage of the priesthood, the priest under the law and the high priest under the law, came about simply because they were born in the tribe of Aaron and under the lineage of Levi. That's the only qualification they had to have. But our high priest is not under that qualification whatsoever. Okay? Said his basis for power, his basis of serving, his basis of his position, okay, is an indestructible life. Now, what do we mean by an indestructible life? You know, you read through many things, our indestructible brings to our mind many different things. Indestructible life means that there's no sin ever, ever has been, ever will be, okay? His life was perfect in every way. Nobody sent him to die. Christ sent himself to die. Christ fought sin in his world just like we fight sin in our world today. He stood up and he became, he was sinless the entire time, was greater than and above sin in his life. Because of that, he can serve as our high priest because he's a sinless person. Okay? There's no way in our life, we do not serve, we do not have an indestructible life. One day, unless the rapture comes, one day you're going to die. One day I'm going to die. Okay? We're not perfect. We're not indestructible. Okay? We do not have the power over death that Jesus had. Even though he paid the price and died on the cross for us, he was raised again. He had to die. He had to die. 
I, it just galls me when I see these things and says that Jesus didn't love you enough to die for you because you're a sinner. Jesus loved you and me enough that he died a physical death on the cross for you and me. He died a horrible death. If you see all these movies about the crucifixion and everything else, I don't know how he could look forward and see that and still be obedient enough to, to go through that for us. Because we didn't deserve it. We still don't deserve what Christ has done for us. We deserve what we have because of who we are. Okay? God has loved us enough that he provided that perfect sacrifice, that blood covering of our sins, so that when Christ looks down and sees us, he doesn't see Marv Edwards. He doesn't see Marv Edwards' sins. He sees the blood of Christ covering of Marv Edwards and says, because of the blood of Christ, because of what, so, what my son has done for you in the forgiveness of sins, now you have sacrifice, now you have salvation, and now you have eternal life because of what he did for you. He did that for everybody. Okay? For everybody that's ever been ever been alive prior, ever alive now, ever alive in the future. He did that for everybody. You can never be too bad for Christ to pay the price for your sin. You can never be too good to get to heaven without accepting that price that he paid. Okay? Because we know that God loves us enough that he would have sent his son to die on the cross for one person in this room. Just one person. Okay? He loved you enough. So many times we look at Christ came to die for the world. No. Get that out of your mind. I hate that when people say that. Christ came to die for all. No. Christ came to die for me. You. Personally. Put your name there. That's the reason Christ came. He came to die for every one of us. And as he dies for every one of us, then he dies for the whole world. But he came and died for you personally. It's a personal thing. It's a personal thing. Okay? And not a community thing. Not something that is greater that, than that. Okay? Uh, Let an indestructible life. 17 says, For it is declared. Here is the first part of, part of Psalms 110, verse 4. It says, You are a priest forever in the order of Melchizedek. And who is saying this? God himself is saying this. God himself is saying that he is, you are a priest forever. Who's he talking about? He's talking about me and you? Is he talking about a high priest of, of Levi or anybody else? He's talking about Jesus Christ himself. Okay? Jesus Christ himself is a priest, is a high priest forever. He is in the line of Melchizedek, remember, because he does not have a beginning and an end. He is, he is eternal. He has never started and never ended. There's no beginning, no end for him. He is with us from, from in the past, in the present, and in the future. Okay? Forever. He doesn't suffer each and every day like we do. It says the former regulations are set aside because it was weak and useless. It was weak. It was weak because it could not provide justification for us. The former, the former here he's talking about is the law itself. The law is set aside. Scripture tells us it is set aside, been set aside, because one, it is weak. It is weak because it could only provide atonement, could not provide salvation, could not provide forgiveness of sins. Okay? It is useless because there's no, all of this stuff did nothing for them whatsoever. The law could not bring them in the presence of God. The law could not bring them to live like Christ each and every day and could not bring them to glorification. Could not do that. Without the forgiveness of sin, there is no glorification. You're in paradise living there as a spiritual being, but you're not glorified. You're just there. So therefore, the law provided that spot to hold you for a period of time, but you're not glorified. We're now, as a new covenant believer, as a believer in God, and then, then played for the blood of Christ in our lives and forgiven of our sins, now we can be glorified. So now then, it, we, do, we do not have a... a Christianity that is useless or weak because God holds you and me in his hand. God is making a promise to you that hey, what I have provided for you, I will keep for you from now 
through eternity. Now through eternity. You know, we we live 50, 75, 85, maybe 100 years here on this earth. What a short time to suffer for God. God brings those things on us, allows those things to come in our life so that we can be strengthened. I think so many times in my life, God allows things to come in my life to bring me back to my knees saying, Marv, you're not really in control of anything. You have no power to change anything except through me, through the Father. We are his workmen. We are those that every day ought to be out witnessing to people, telling them what Christ has done, not for me, what Christ has done for them. Okay? Many times we say, well, tell what God has done to you in your life. That's good to do that. But let them understand that what God has done in your life is available to them also. Because if it's not available to them, what good is it to them? Of no value to them. Okay? They have no hope except for the salvation of God. So we understand that God has done all these things for us. We serve a master that is perfect, always has been, always will be. We serve a God, a high priest that is interceding at the right hand of the Father. We see next week when we get on a little further down here where Jesus is sitting at the right hand of the Father in the third heaven, in the heaven of heavens, if you will, you know, interceding for you and I every day. Every day. What a blessing. What a blessing that God has provided for us. Okay? How about in this day? See you next week.